Hello guys, uh, welcome all of you to today's farmcast. Today we'll discuss five drugs of choice and a question that was asked by a student. Is there a difference between the score that I get in the Q bank and the grand test and how does it judge my preparation, right? So I'll discuss that at last. So let us begin with the drugs of choice for today. The first one is a disorder called as GERD or gastroesophageal reflux disease. Now all of you might be aware guys that the drug of choice for GERD is PPI, is proton pump inhibitors. But what you need to know is something related to the use of PPIs in GERD that when do we stop it? See guys, in PPI, we stop the treatment after improvement of the symptoms except except in case of Barrett's esophagus. In Barrett's esophagus, or if there is severe esophagitis then in that case guys we need long-term treatment in case of Barrett's esophagus lifelong treatment might be required that is one thing second thing GERD with pregnancy remember proton pump inhibitors are not the first line drug so the drug of choice for GERD in pregnancy these are antacids and sucralfate now only in case the patient does not improve with antacids and sucralfate in a pregnant female, then we can go for PPIs, proton pump inhibitors. So proton pump inhibitors are category C drug, right? So C means they are not entirely safe, but we can use them if the benefit is more than risk and if the female is not responding to antacids, sucralfate, then we can use PPIs. And I've told you in my lectures that out of all the PPIs that we have, the safest one to be used in pregnancy is Lansoprazole, is the safest in pregnancy. Now moving on to the second disorder for today guys, it is GIDSS and GIDSS has been asked many many times guys, the drug of choice for GIDSS is Metronidazole. Now the second thing that they can ask you is, what if it is a case of Metronidazole resistant GIDSS? In that case, the drug of choice becomes Thing, guys, think. What becomes the drug of choice? The drug of choice becomes nitazoxanide. Nitazoxanide, as all of you know, it is, it is the drug of choice for cryptosporidiasis as well. And how does nitazoxanide act? It acts by blocking an enzyme called as PFOR, pyruvate pyridoxin oxidoreductase, right? That is required for generation of ATP. So we block that, we block ATP generation in the GRDA. Moving on to the third disorder for today guys, it is GIST or Gastrointestinal Stromal Tumor. For GIST, the drug of choice is Imatinib. It has been asked a couple of times, Imatinib is the drug of choice for GIST. And Imatinib as all of you know is a BCR, ABL, tyrosine kinase inhibitor. Moving ahead, in case the patient does not respond to Imatinib, so Imatinib resistant GIST, then my drug of choice becomes Sunitinib. In case the patient even does not respond to sunitinib, then I go for another tyrosine kinase inhibitor called as rigorafenib. So imitinib, sunitinib, rigorafenib, right? So remember the sequence. The fourth disorder for today, guys, glaucoma. Now, guys, remember if it is a medical emergency with glaucoma, like acute congestive glaucoma, right? So immediately we begin the treatment with uh, mannitol. And mannitol, the osmotic diuretic is the drug of choice for... Um, an acute congestive glaucoma case and once the IOP normalizes we start the patient on pilocarpine so if they ask you drug of choice for closed angle glaucoma it is pilocarpine but for that acute congestive glaucoma attack we use mannitol pilocarpine is started once the IOP IOP comes to a normal range right but if they ask you about open angle glaucoma or normal tension glaucoma. In both, the drug of choice are prostaglandin analogs like latanoprost. If the patient does not respond, we can go to the second line drugs which are beta blockers. The last disorder for today, finally guys, it is glucagonoma. And glucagonoma, the drug of choice is, is, what is it guys, think. Glucagonoma, see for most of the metabolic tumors, including glucagonoma, the drug of choice is octreotide, except one, insulinoma. If it is insulinoma, then what is the drug of choice? Then the drug of choice is disoxide, guys, right? So these are the drugs of choice for today, guys. Now moving on to the anti-cancer drug. Today, the anti-cancer drug that I've chosen is another important one. It is a monoclonal antibody. It is a monoclonal antibody called as trastuzumab. And guys, remember trastuzumab, it is an anti-HER2 
receptor monoclonal antibody and the location of HER2 receptors it is in breast, stomach and heart. So breast and stomach we use it. For example, trastuzumab is drug of choice for HER2 positive breast cancer as well as HER2 positive stomach cancer. But the presence in heart is not a use, it is a side effect. So trastuzumab causes cardiotoxicity. It has been asked a couple of times. So use trastuzumab drug of choice for HER2 positive breast cancer, stomach cancer. Side effect, cardiotoxicity. The last point here guys, if a patient on trastuzumab is still progressive, not responding, then in that case, I will go for HER2 tyrosine kinase inhibitor and that is lapatinib, right? So guys, that's all for the drug section today. We have uh, come to the last section of PharmCast where I discuss one of your doubts or concern. And today some students, they had asked yesterday that is there a difference between the score in QBank and Grand Test? And how do I judge my preparation according to these scores? Now guys, remember, it's very simple that you are bound to score better or well in your Q banks because you have just gone through the topic, the video or notes or whatever. And then you are trying to, uh, you know, implement the knowledge that you have gained to solve questions from the Q bank. So Q bank relatively we perform well, right? If you are going the way I said, because that is the best way to go about Q banks go through the video or notes then try to attempt the QBank right so we need to learn how to apply the knowledge to solve the question so guys having the knowledge is one thing but then applying it to get result in the MCQs is a different thing right so that is what we need to practice but you know that grand test is a mixed bag right of questions from all the 19 subjects spread right haphazardly and you might not perform that well as much as you perform in your QBank but does, does it mean that your preparation is not well? No, not at all guys, not at all. Because remember, you tend to score better in your grand test as I've always, I'm telling this, I think fourth or fifth time in my found cast that you tend to score well in your grand test only after your first revision is over, right? But remember this should not dissuade you from giving grant test. You should keep on giving grant test no matter what is your performance, what is the percentile, percentage, whatever you get, does not matter. So in a preparation guys, both QBank and GTs are the important tools. Now if I compare it in the cricketing language, QBank is like net practice. Whereas grant tests are like the qualifying matches, right? That a team plays, whereas the need is like the World Cup final. So you know that, you know, you get the hang of it that you cannot just go and play the final directly, right? Without adequate net practice and a few winning moments in the qualifying matches. So that will boost up your morale and it will give you an extra edge so that you can perform well in the finals, right? So that is the best way I can explain you, right? In cricketing analogy as to what is the role of uh, a Q bank, a GT, etc for your exam that is the final match and guys uh, a second question is a it's a difficult one for me to answer uh, that is how to avoid distraction of uh, IPL right so I remember when I was preparing IPL was already introduced I if I'm not wrong it was started in the year 2008 I think right because that is the time when even I scrambled to get a connection to watch IPL and all because I was living in uh, a hostel so guys uh, when I was in your place IPL was not a part of my problem the reason being it was being organized in the, the month of April or May I think right so it's not a big deal and but I used to uh, live near the CP cannot place Delhi and uh, there was a theater Rivoli theater it is still there uh, which is just 500 meters uh, from my uh, place of living and at times uh, when I would go out, I would uh, get the temptation to go and watch a new release, right? And then I had to stop myself and uh, I had to ask myself what is more important, right? So whenever you, you think of wasting time in such activities like IPL, movies, etc. Remind yourself of uh, bearing this hardship for another three to four months and after three to four months, if you bear this hardship, you'll be through that and then you can do whatever you want. And then ask yourself, would you like to go through this same churn for another one year? You're getting my point, what I'm trying to say. 
So guys, this last months of preparation, they are very, very crucial and they will change your fortune. So use them wisely, right? So in fact, I would ad advise you that if you are, because see, we all human beings are different, right? Some of, some of us, we have better self-control. Some of us, we don't have. And we say, let us, okay, it's one match. Let me watch one match. What's the big deal? And then it turns into two matches, three matches, four matches. And thereby we tend to lose a lot of time for that. And remember guys, there is no time for all of these things now. And if you're still getting tempted, then write down this line on a paper and stick it on your wall that if you don't sit down now, you might have to sit for another one year. Now, even the thought process of sitting another one year, right, and going through the same torture, it will it will have an impact in you in a way that you cannot even think. So keep reminding yourself that uh, this is the time, guys, when you need to accelerate, right? This is the time has come when you need to accelerate. If you remember, have you ever seen a, a relay race or a thousand or uh, 2000 or 4000 meter race, right? See, I'm not talking about the short 100, 200 meter race, right? So more than 1000 meter race. In those races, guys, what used to happen? Uh, what happens actually is initially initially you don't run fast right you run slowly and you try to cover maximum possible distance uh, thereby thereby you know still keeping your atps alive but when you come towards the flag end that is the last 200 or 300 meter you use each and every drop of your atp and try to cross that line right faster from all the other <clears throat> people who are running in that in that particular uh, race so the same thing applies here as well. So you, you are running, you know, for quite some time and now the time has come to even increase your speed, right? Use every drop of the last ATP that you have and cross that line, guys. So guys, I hope uh, this thing is clear and <clears throat> if you're still having problem, I, I suggest you just rather make a timetable, right? Make a timetable for the next three months, how you're going to revise, how you're going to appear for the exam and you would see that every day when you divide the timetable not only into days weeks and months even hours for every day you would see that you don't have any time left right you don't have any time left guys even i remember the last last one to two months of preparation i used to feel why there are 24 hours in a day i mean this is the funny thing right so though the time when i was awake and trying to study it would get over so fast so you'll realize when you make a timetable that you don't have time. So that's all for today, guys. If you have any doubts, concerns like this, you can always let me know in the comment box and I'll try to include your concern in one of my forecasts. Take care. Bye-bye. This was Dr. Ranjan with you.